Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Green Tech Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Green Tech Today is brought to you by the Eco Imagination Challenge from GE. GE and its partners are awarding $200 million to ideas that help build the next generation power grid for the 21st century. For more information and to view and comment on ideas, go to ecomagination.com forward slash challenge. And by MailRoute. Businesses of every size use MailRoute. One user to 50,000 users, it doesn't matter. MailRoute will protect you from spam and viruses, simplify your life, and make your email usable again. Coal is not the first word on the lips of clean energy advocates. However, the United States and developing countries like China are using coal for energy at an ever-increasing rate. Cambridge, Massachusetts-based Great Point Energy thinks its coal gasification technology will help make dirty coal a thing of the past. Using catalysts instead of heat to turn coal into blue gas, their process promises cleaner burning fuel produced with fewer emissions and at a lower cost to the consumer. We're in Somerset, Massachusetts at Great Point Energy's Mayflower facility. I'm here with Tom Robinson. He is the Vice President of Projects. Tom, can you tell me what, what goes on here at this plant? Certainly. Um, our process is, uh, is termed hydromethanation. Mm -hmm. And the process takes coal or petroleum coke or any, any material containing a lot of carbon and um, processes it in a way that turns the carbon into methane, natural gas, pipeline quality natural gas, mm -hmm. and cleaned up, and um, segregates the carbon dioxide that's formed, CO2, and can produce that for uh, oil, enhanced oil recovery process where you'd inject it into the ground and push more oil up. So it's basically, the, the carbon dioxide is not released into the air, it's pushed down into the ground and sequestered. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, we have a, uh, a process by which carbon is transformed into methane and CO2. Uh, the methane is a commercial product. The CO2 is a byproduct for the other purposes of, of hand soil recovery. And <clears throat> this process is catalytic in nature. Um, we add a catalyst to the coal particles. Mm -hmm. And um, that catalyst uh, allows the process to take part, uh, take take place at low temperature and low pressure, relatively low and, uh, low temperature and low pressure. We're about 1300 degrees Fahrenheit and 500 PSI, which sound like high, high things, but, but <laughs> uh, by the chemical process industry, that's relatively relaxed conditions. Okay, it doesn't take as much energy to get to those conditions as normal processing. Both an energy advantage and also a capital cost advantage. Right. As pressures goes up and as temperatures go up, equipment becomes more expensive. Okay. And so we have a, uh, a significant capital cost advantage by reducing those temperatures and pressures at which this process takes place. Okay. And um, the uh, catalyst is applied to the coal particles and those coal particles are ground to a certain size. And we care about the size because we're gonna put them in a chamber, a reactor, that's a, that's a big cylinder, and we're going to put gases in the bottom and fluidize those particles. That mm -hmm. means that they're, they're moving around, kind of uh, um, being projected up by the gas, and then they fall by gravity. And this whole bed is, fluidized, is a fluidized bed of particles. Okay. And you use a fluidized bed because it really promotes chemical reactions and is, a, is an efficient way to have this particle to gas transformation take place. Right, so you really end up with the, the particles becoming uh, a really exposed to the gas, as much surface area exposed to the gas exactly. as possible. Particle size and porosity is surface area mm -hmm. and um, the, the fact that they're, they're dancing in this, in this gas and the gas is um, uh, some of the products of, 
of the reaction as well as a, a steam injection in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And uh, hence the name hydromethanation. We're doing it with, with steam. With water. water. Yeah. And um, the steam is a source of hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen combines with some of the carbon and makes CO2 and provides energy for the other half of the process to take place where the hydrogen combines with carbon and makes methane, methane. Okay. CH4. And um, the, as I said earlier, the CO2 is sequestered and the methane is our product. Uh, the product comes out of the top of this reactor and goes through various stages of, of energy recovery and gas cleanup so that the end product truly is a pipeline quality gas as you would burn in your stove at home. Okay. We'll put the gas into a uh, We'll sell, meter it into the international or the national pipeline grids of whatever nation we're in, and um, take it off into the into the commercial application. It would be used, and um, our our company really deals with the on the ground equipment. We don't mine the coal. We take the coal in from a source, mm -hmm. and we don't use the gas. We'd put that into the pipeline for other people to use. Right. And <clears throat> think of it. I think of it as a uh, a coal refinery. It's a very capital intensive, uh, big projects. Um, we have opportunities in the United States, we have opportunities in China, we have opportunities in India, and we're um, presently uh, advancing those opportunities based on the work that was done at this facility. Um, this facility is a pilot scale um, plant that represents how a larger commercial scale plant would operate and behave. Right. So we operate this plant and we get the data from it and that data is representative of the, of the larger plant's data. Right. This plant happens to be about six inches in diameter, the reactor for this plant happens to be about six inches in diameter and 140 feet tall. It's 140 feet tall because it's the same height as the fluidized bed of a commercial plant. Um, the diameter of course is smaller but everything else about it is the same as a commercial plant. Temperatures, pressures, particle sizes, catalyst, the means by which we put it on, the, the way it behaves. Mm -hmm. um, all things are as representative as we can make them here of a commercial facility. So it's a demonstration plant. Yeah, how much, uh, what, what's the, the actual scale? How much coal can be refined here in a day? In this, in this day, uh, in this plant, we, uh, we can process from one to about three tons per day. And the reason there's a variation is that different materials have different amounts of carbon in them. Okay. So a carbon rich material you'd need less of than a carbon lean material like a, a coal with a lot of ash in it. So it depends on where the coals come from and, and what... Yes, the sources of the coal. Yeah. And this facility was made to uh, allow a testing of a broad range of different feedstocks. Um, petroleum coke to a, to a lower quality coal. And petroleum coke, that's a, a byproduct of petroleum refining. Yes, it's a yeah. very, very carbon rich, 98% um, carbon. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good product for our feedstock. Mm -hmm. It happens to be the waste product of various refining processes. Okay, so you can use some waste materials from other refining processes, some raw materials from coal mining processes, yes. and then it's a very flexible process. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. When we come back, Tom will give us a tour of the plant. Stay tuned. We're partnering with uh, four of the, the biggest uh, venture capital firms in the clean energy space, three in the US, one in Europe. Uh, you know, again, we think that the combination of GE investment and venture capital investment it's going to allow us to increase innovation. It's going to allow us to accelerate new ideas. It puts us shoulder to shoulder with some of the smartest tech investors. And we can use the what I would call the industrial clout of GE to bring technologies to this marketplace faster. GE announced its challenge at a San Francisco event along with its four venture capital partners. Emerald Technology Ventures, Foundation Capital, Kleiner Perkins Caulfield & Byers, and Rockport Capital Partners have all joined with GE. Ideas from companies and individuals can be entered through the Ecoimagination.com website for the next 10 weeks. So check out Ecoimagination.com. Businesses of every size use MailRoute. One user to 50,000 users, it doesn't matter. MailRoute will protect you from spam and viruses, simplify your life, 
and make your email usable again. MailRoute is a secure, hosted service that filters virus and spam from companies of any size. There's nothing easier for mail filtering than MailRoute. There's no hardware or software to install. You just sign up with MailRoute to start your mail flowing through them, and then they do all the work for you. Visit MailRoute.info to sign up. As a TWIT listener, you'll receive a 10% discount for the life of your account. Small business accounts start at $2 per user per month for 10 users, and because of demand from the TWIT army, MailRoute has added a new service for individual users as well. Visit MailRoute.info and sign up with the email filtering service that Tom and Leo use. I think the purpose of today is to take a tour of this yeah. demonstration plant and show, show you what we do with these uh, one to three tons per day of coal. Yeah, so let's take the tour. All right. Okay. Um, in this concrete room, uh, we have coal crushing and grinding equipment that takes the coal from as you would receive it out of a coal mine, maybe two inches in size, down to um, 100 to 200 microns in size. And the purpose of that particle, as we said earlier, is to make a lot of surface area mm -hmm. and also to be able to be appropriately sized so that it behaves in the fluid bed. Uh, as, a, as a moving particle. It doesn't hang around as a big one at the bottom. It doesn't fly out as a small one at the top. Right. Um, these particles then move over to this equipment. Once properly sized, they move over to this equipment and you'll see uh, tanks in which the particles are uh, placed in, along with a solution that contains the catalyst and they're mixed and held for a certain period of time and the catalyst is um, in intimate contact with the coal particles. Okay, and this is a, pr a proprietary catalyst that you yes, use? It is. Okay. Yes, it's a proprietary uh, catalyst as well as patented process steps. Okay. Um, those particles now have um, water catalyst and particles, uh, the particles of coal, and we will take them into this equipment. Um, this equipment is a dryer. The particles uh, are placed in this dryer and they still have a lot of um, solution on them. Mm -hmm. And by evaporating off the liquid component of the solution, the catalyst becomes ever increasingly concentrated on the surface of the particle. Okay. And, um, we get it up so hot that we actually want to cool it down before we send it off to the next piece of equipment. So underneath the, dry, underneath the dryer is a cooler, just a simple water heat exchanger cooler. And now we've got cold particles with catalyst on them. Mm -hmm. And they're small. And if you expose them to air, they'll start to heat up. They'll start to oxidize. So from now on, we, we do all this uh, processing under a nitrogen blanket. So we exclude oxygen and control the particles. Okay. Dried, cooled particles come out and they can be handled on, on regular equipment. Okay. And uh, under a nitrogen blanket, they're transported by this bucket elevator, either into this storage silo for use in the future, or all the way up to the top of the tower where it enters a uh, uh, bin mm -hmm. and is weighed and then is moved through a series of valves and bins, we call it a lock hopper, uh, so where the particles can be transported into the process. Now remember the process was at high pressure. Yeah. So we have to have a way of getting the particles in without having that pressurized gas come out. Mm -hmm. And the method we use is a series of valves and chambers. It's a, like a double door on a, on a pressurized tennis court. You know, this inflatable tennis court. Space station. <laughs> yeah. yeah, space station. <laughs> and uh, so we, we um, bring the particles in through these various chambers, all under nitrogen, and then we use a little bit of nitrogen to push the particles into the fluidized bed of the reactor. Carbon in, blue gas, natural gas out. It's interchangeable with and likely to be cheaper than new drilled and liquefied natural gas. So is hydromethanation a technology that will take not only the United States, but also Canada, China, and India, among others, a step closer to energy independence and a cleaner environment? 
Only time will tell. That's it for this episode of Green Tech Today. Subscribe at twit.tv forward slash GTT and never miss a show. If you have a question or a comment, email us at greentechtoday at twit.tv or you can leave a voicemail at 415-GT-TODAY.